Guys, I got these Edith glasses on Amazon. These things are huge. I'm a Lego inventor, and today I'm gonna build a Lego robot arm that I can control using my arm. Kinda like the ones Tony Stark uses in Avengers Endgame, he's putting in the Infinity Stones. And I'm gonna use the Lego Nano Gauntlet that I built to actually test out the robot. So here's the plan. First, we need to grab some parts. Here's my bin of EV3 parts, and we're going to need a gyro sensor. Basically, these actually sense the degrees that it turns. So what we need to do is we need to find the output of the gyro sensor. And then we need to take that same output and make it so that this always equals that same output. Theoretically, if my coding from last year is sufficient, this will work amazing. Look at that, guys. Okay, so now it's working. As you can see, it works. So basically here, we're just subtracting the gyro sensor rotation from the motor rotation, and then we're feeding the difference between those into a motor block to tell it how far it turns, so that they always equal roughly the same thing. So now we just need to connect three more of these to different parts on our arm and different parts of the robot, but we need to fix this setup first, because we need to optimize for torque, and I know a perfect way to do that. We need one of these. We're also gonna need some of these bushings. One of these, I actually bought some of these, so we can use a worm gear. We also need some of these gears, because these make it work. So to build a worm gear thing, we need this. Put the worm gear in here, like that. We'll put an axle through this so we can spin the worm gear. And then we add a couple of bushings on each side, just to hold that in. And then we grab a gear, and we put this right here. So now, the cool thing about worm gears is that you can only spin them using the worm gear. So now we just need to connect this to this. So this will hook onto the next section, and that'll be how we hinge the robot arm. So now, we grab this thing, so when we play the program, and then the code, we'll just need to add a multiplier to this to account for this gear ratio. You can also use a metal axle and gear in there, since we have some of those from metal technic parts, but that works perfectly. Okay, so that'll control the next section. So now we just need to build more joints. We need the one for the bottom, so it can reach like this. Two, three, and then one to rotate the bottom. So let's build a couple more of these. Okay, so now we have three of these. So now each one hooks onto its own motor. The motor turns it, and that will turn the following section. So now if we connect a motor to this next one, we just need to find a way to connect these using a technique. Take this, connect this to this, and we put this on here. This is just a prototype. We want it as short as possible, basically, and these aren't gonna be in line with each other. The next one we'll just put on this side, so it'll still keep its balance, but it won't really work to have this right in front of this. It'll just make it too long. We're trying to go with a micro arm, okay? Wow, that's a big robot. But look, it holds itself up. Uh-oh. Oh, this piece, crud. We'll find a better way to attach that, I guess. We just need to kind of shrink this up a little bit to make it shorter, and then we can figure out how we're gonna spin the bottom section. Okay, so we've just finished putting this together, basically. It's a little little wobbly, a little wibbly, whatever, right? But it works. So now we need to figure out two things. We need to figure out, one, how we're going to build a gripper on the front that's gonna actually open and close using only this one motor, and two, how we're gonna make the bottom turn. Now, I already have an idea for that, but we need a single piece that's gonna make that work. So if we go over to this, this drawer here, this drawer, I have no idea where it is. Ah, uh, dude, there we go. So this is the piece that I need. Uh, the reason is because we can turn this using a motor on the bottom. And this can also connect to this motor like that. And then we just need one more motor going into this piece right here, which will make it turn. All right, so for this thing, we need to connect this to the bottom right here. And then what we need to do is we need to create a 90 degree turny thing here. Because this needs to come up to the top, this gear. This will control the turning of the top. Again, this is another gear ratio, so we'll need to add a multiplier in the code. Basically, that turns that. And then on the bottom down here, instead of putting this straight up like this, since that would take up a ton more space, I'm gonna put it like this, and then use something like probably this piece here. Usually I'd use these bevel gears for this, and we put one right here and one in there, put a piece like this through, and now as you can see, you've transitioned the rotary function to go 90 degrees. But we happen to have some metal Technic parts gears here that are made of metal that are also bevel gears. So we're gonna use those just to add an extra strong factor, then we'll just replace it with those, and that will be perfect. Boom, there we go. Now this thing goes right up through here. Look at that, guys. That's how that works, now it controls that. And then in here, we just need a piece to go all the way across. Really hold that together. And that ain't going anywhere. So now we just connect this to this. Using my favorite pieces, these little things. These are just these little pins. And so we can set them up like this. Basically on all my robot arms, I use the same pin system. You basically just snap together. Super satisfying noise, and boom. So now, that's our robot arm. The next step, we need to actually build a claw. And we have one motor. If you think about it, we don't exactly need this torque. Grab a couple of these, and these are like these little lift arm things. We wanna get the smallest ones we can, and then we get two of these, like that. And now on these corners, what we do is we add. So now we have that. So these can close. 
So now we need this. Inside of this, we add both of these, and this way we can put them both in the same stud like that, which is absolutely perfect. And then we add that, add these pieces here, bam, bam. Then all we need is a piece like this. Cool, and then let's just try that again on the other side. All right, so now when the motor turns, as you can see, as this motor turns it, it opens and closes the arms. But there's that. Then if we reattach this like this, put that in there. All right, so now let's hook this up to the EV3 and test the individual motor movements. I just wanna stop right here and ask, would you consider subscribing? Thanks. And there we go. So now if we just hold this. Okay, that's a little fast, but that's okay. We'll fix that in the programming. That's also a little fast, but it works. Perfect. Now we gotta connect four cables to the sensors and then we need to work on the multipliers. And for the gear ratio multipliers, I found a super cool resource that's free and is online. Lego gear ratio calculator. This is by Sario. He actually has a YouTube channel. This is his website, Sario Tools. But he actually has a free gear ratio calculator. We put in the driver gear of the worm gear ratio. We bring that up as one tooth. And then we put in the follow gear, 24 teeth. We have 24 to one. So for the worm gears, whatever it senses in degrees, we need to multiply it by 24 because we're gonna have to have moving 24 times to get one actual rotation. And for the bottom, we just switch this out to the 20 tooth gear and then 60 tooth gear. And the ratio is three to one. So we'll need to multiply this one by three we can do that in the code really simply. Super great resource, I'll leave a link down in the description. So let's start with this one at the bottom here. So if we do this here, 180 degrees, that doesn't go 180 degrees. So now we need to add in that multiplier. We just want to multiply the angle that is going in from the gyro sensor. So multiply that by three, and then bring that in, we'll subtract that from what the motor is. So let's see if this works. There we go. Now it's matching the angle, right? So that's perfect. So now when we attach it to our arm, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so we just multiplied it by three and that fixes the gear ratio. We're just gonna take this code and literally just dupe it. It's <laughs> just perfect. Okay, so the next step, we have four of these gyro sensors and we need to attach them to four points on my arm. For the finger, we can actually use, <laughs> for the finger, we can literally just use this piece. Just like that. Okay, so now we can connect that and we can connect this on top of here. So let's build a couple straps. And we need one more of these. Theoretically, it should fit right here. And it does. This can go right here. So now we just need to attach these to this. We're getting so close to having this thing done. All right, so the next step is to actually make this look like a cool robot arm instead of just a bunch of Technic pieces and motors thrown together. All right guys, this is it, the moment you've all been waiting for. I finally completed it, and that's with coding and everything else. So check this out. Basically, to start it up, you turn it on. This goes on first. So this will control the rotation. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to put on this, which will control thing right here. And then the sling ring. Then all we gotta do is get in the same position as this so that we always start off in the same position. So that's about like this. <laughs> and we just play it. Open and close the grabbers, bring it back up, and that's how it works. I needed to attach a rubber thing to this, but that didn't end up happening. Now it's not 100% accurate. There were some bugs just having all these sensors in a line like this. So let's try this out. Let's put it flat, and then we can actually try and grab something. This is like a weird thing, but we'll see if we can grab it. So if we start it out like this, start program. Can we reach this? Angle this down, a little more, grab it. We're so close, I just need to like pick up this brick here. There we go, finally. So I'm realizing it would actually be better to just have it so that I can control, kind of like a controller, you push up to go up, I would just angle my hand up instead of it following my hand movement exactly. It kind of gets a little bit out of whack after a while, but we picked up a brick and that's a grip dink. And there you go. The true test to see if this actually works. We're gonna try and put the Infinity Stones on our Lego Nano Gauntlet that we built. So I've attached Lego magnets to the Infinity Gauntlet and on the back of the Infinity Stones, we have 
Paper clips. I know it's kind of ad lib, but hey. The goal is to see if we can actually pick them up from this little pedestal and set them on top of this. Let's see if we can do this. The whole point of this is that so you can't touch the infinity stones and here I am just touching them. First infinity stone is on. Okay, now for the power stone. Okay, and this one goes right in that top corner. I'm gonna angle this just a little bit. Right up there. Second one is down. Then we have the reality stone. I think I'm getting the hang of this. So I drop it. I put that right up, right up there. Oh my gosh, this is very stressful. Next up we have the space stone. And that is the space stone. We're doing good. Now, the soul stone. Here we go. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, one more stone. All right, we're going over the time stone. And gently place it on. <laughs> and now we have all the infinity stones and this thing is just run out of battery. <laughs> Wow, okay, so it does work. You know, it obviously needs some tweaking. I think this is a super novel idea. So yeah, as is, I'd probably rate this an eight out of 10 just because it's so cool. Not a 10 out of 10 because of the tweaks it has. <laughs> I mean, who else can say that they have a robot arm they can control with their real arm? That's like pretty sick. Huge thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out this video's sponsor, Crazy Kai's Brickling Store for your Lego brick needs. You can check them out by clicking the link down in the description or this button right here on screen. See ya.